Hey Capsule Crew, so it may just be me, but growing up watching the early seasons of the Pokemon anime, I seem to remember that even as a young kid, I thought Ash's Pikachu was one of the dumbest parts of the series. And I can say that after all of these years of the Pokemon anime and its various iterations that my thoughts on Pikachu haven't really changed much. It's overused and a downright hindrance to the show at times in the series. You may disagree with me on this, which is great news for you because there are many seasons of the Pokemon anime to enjoy Pikachu and its antics. But if you watched the first season, then you might enjoy this video on the dumbest Pikachu moments from the Indigo League season of the Pokemon anime. These are just some of the moments that I thought were particularly egregious, so if you can think of any others, then hit me with them in the comments. Also, if you can, please consider joining the Capsule Crew by hitting the subscribe button. It really helps me out. Early in the Indigo League series, Ash challenges the Cerulean City Gym for the Cascade Badge, but unfortunately realizes that the sisters who run the gym have grown tired of battling and instead offer to just give Ash the Cascade Badge for free. Being the noble Pokemon trainer that he is, Ash refuses this shortcut to the Pokemon League and insists that they give him a gym battle. Lucky for Ash, his recent traveling partner Misty appears and reveals that she too is one of the Cerulean City Gym sisters and will gladly take him on in a gym battle. Now as we all know, Misty is a water type trainer who at this time has a Goldeen, Staryu, and Starmie. If we remember, Ash's main Pokemon in his possession is his trusty Pikachu, whose electric attacks are extremely effective against every one of Misty's Pokemon. Ash was made for this gym battle, but Hold that thought, because as soon as Ash calls on Pikachu to start off the battle, Pikachu refuses to enter. Now get this, the reason that Pikachu refuses to enter the battle is because it considers Misty a friend. This is the same Pikachu that will routinely electrocute its trainer and best friend at the slightest sign of discomfort. This is also the same trainer who literally stood in front of an army of vicious Sparrow to defend a Pokemon that actually hated him. But here, at Ash's first chance to prove himself as a legitimate Pokemon trainer in his first ever official gym battle, the Pokemon he risked his life for decides to humiliate him for someone who hasn't done anything for it besides join the group to collect money that Ash owes to her. Remind me why everyone loves this Pokemon so much? So instead, Ash uses his Butterfree and Pidgeotto, and the battle goes on way longer than it should, giving time for Team Rocket to bust in and capture Pikachu and ruin the gym. Pikachu eventually uses its Thunderbolt attack and blasts away Team Rocket, removing the threat. Now get this, the Cerulean sisters decide to override Misty's decision to battle and just give Ash the badge anyway, since Pikachu saved the gym by dealing with Team Rocket. So after all of that, Ash was given the badge without winning the gym battle after all. If Pikachu would have just battled like Ash commanded it to, then the battle would have been over quickly, leaving Team Rocket to bust into an empty gym and waste their time. Instead, Pikachu caused the destruction of the entire gym, as well as put the rest of the people in danger. The sisters even told Misty that she wouldn't have won anyway if Pikachu had just battled from the beginning. So not only was it incredibly stupid, but it also ruined the episode and cheated the viewers out of a proper gym episode. Thanks Pikachu. The next two moments actually come from the same episode, Electric Shock Showdown. In this episode, Ash comes to Vermilion City and challenges the electric gym leader, Lieutenant Surge, and his powerful Raichu. Lieutenant Surge makes fun of Ash and his puny Pikachu, while overwhelming it with its much stronger Raichu, causing Ash to look for ways to strengthen his Pikachu and defeat the gym. This causes him to learn from a Nurse Joy that by exposing Pikachu to a Thunderstone, it will evolve into Raichu as well. Ash easily considers the option of evolving Pikachu into Raichu, but of course, Pikachu doesn't want to evolve and wants to beat Raichu as it is. This is all fine and well until Ash lets Pikachu decide its evolutionary fate by holding out the Thunderstone in front of it. Pikachu then touches the Thunderstone with its tail and makes the long-awaited evolution to Raichu. Just kidding, for some reason Pikachu was able to smack the Thunderstone away with its tail without triggering an evolution at all. This in reality should have resulted in Pikachu evolving, which would have been really ironic and satisfying to see. Instead, stubborn Pikachu just breaks the rules of Pokemon and sends it across the room. This leads us back to the Vermilion City Gym and a rematch with Lieutenant Surge. Now this is when the episode has the chance to be really smart and align itself with the video games in a really nice way. 
Ash learns that Lieutenant Surge evolved his Pikachu shortly after catching it, meaning that just as in the games, he would have missed out on his Pikachu learning its agility and speedy attacks. Meaning that Pikachu may have an advantage when it comes to speed and maneuverability. This works well for Pikachu at first in the battle, and it easily dodges Raichu's heavy attacks such as Body Slam, causing Raichu to wear itself down in the process. As the battle goes on and Raichu continues to fail at landing its attacks, Lieutenant Surge gets more and more aggravated, and orders Raichu to unleash its most powerful Thunderbolt attack. This Thunderbolt fills the entire gym with electricity, breaking the gym floor and shattering all of the windows in the process. Just as the smoke clears and Lieutenant Surge is sure of victory, that's when we see it. Pikachu standing on its tail against the wall with the most annoyingly confident look on its face. This is what completely ruins the end of this episode, and the entire gym battle itself. Brock explains to Ash that Pikachu used its tail as a ground in order to completely dodge Raichu's attack. Raichu in turn has no energy left to attack, leaving Pikachu with an easy victory. The cherry on top is that Pikachu uses electricity for the finishing blow against Raichu, who, if you remember, has a natural ground due to its longer tail, as stated in the Pokedex. So if Pikachu can completely negate the strongest Thunderbolt we've seen, then by that logic, Raichu should have never been affected by electricity at all. But in the end, Pikachu wins and we all lose. This next moment just so happens to be another gym battle from Ash's lackluster series of gym experiences during the first season of the Pokemon anime. Now I know that the anime and the video games are distinctly different universes and the same rules don't always apply to the anime adaptation, but as fans you would like to see a certain level of respect paid to the core attributes of the franchise. Things like type weaknesses and resistances are core pillars of every type of Pokemon media, including the games, card game, and anime. So tell me why, when Ash comes face to face with the Cinnabar Island gym leader Blaine and his Rhydon, does he choose a Pikachu for the battle? At this point in the anime, Ash already has obtained 6 badges, meaning that he has managed to defeat 6 of the best Pokemon trainers in the Kanto region. So you would assume that he is at least a pretty good trainer with a lot of knowledge about Pokemon battles. So why would he choose to use an electric type Pokemon against a rock ground type instead of, I don't know, his Bulbasaur maybe? So that puts us in a position for a really dumb Pikachu moment. Obviously, Pikachu's electric attacks do nothing to ride on and the battle looks hopeless when Ash finally decides to switch to a different Pokemon. Nope, he commands Pikachu to, ready? Go for the horn. So apparently, Rhydon's horn is made of metal, which is never stated in any of the first generation Pokedex entries, so I'm not sure that's even 100% canon. The only thing that I could find close to that was from some of the later generations when it describes its horn as drill-like. Either way, the Pokemon is still rock and ground type, which means that even if the horn was metal and could be used as a lightning rod as Brock stated, the electricity would just travel down to the rock body and be grounded out anyway. But ultimately, the Rhydon was KO'd by the electric attack, and Pikachu was victorious. I don't know why the writers of the first season kept doing things like this in the anime at the time. It's not like today when the show has been running for two decades and you could take some liberties with the episodes. This was the first experience with Pokemon on the screen, and it went hand in hand with Red and Blue version. Why would you want to showcase the coolest part of your games, the gym battles, in such a joke of a way? It seems like those should be the episodes you take most seriously. It did seem like they fixed this issue in later seasons, but the Indigo League was pretty bad. So what do you think? Are there some really dumb Pikachu moments from the first season that I missed? Honestly, I would love to know if you have any because I love looking back at all these things. So let me know. But that's all I have today, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.